So when I first became fascinated with the connection between the brain and the mind, it was almost from a uh, philosophical point of view. I was more interested uh, in focusing on uh, a rigorous approach in terms of the science and in terms of the, the surgery. I, I had a notion that it might be possible to treat patients with stroke uh, and restore function by transplanting human stem cells. And what we found was that these stem cells could partly restore function. We did a series of experiments to understand how this worked. But what we didn't expect and what really stunned us was that uh, many of the patients uh, recovered, patients who we thought had no chance of recovering. And these were patients who were paralyzed on one side, couldn't speak, sometimes couldn't walk well, and we never expected that they would show the degree of recovery that they did. So I remember vividly a 70-year-old woman. She had been through rehab. Uh, she was paralyzed on the left side. All she could do was move her left thumb and barely get her left leg off the bed after the surgery. She lifted her arm up and then she kicked her leg way up in the air. The most important thing to me in terms of my life is to be creative, to make new discoveries. The whole creative process is for me what life is about. Please welcome to the stage, Sonia Kuntz. Two and a half years ago, when I was 31 years old, I was out walking my black lab and pit bull in the, back in the park with my husband, Peter, when something strange started happening to my brain. I kept trying to speak to him, but different words came out of my mouth than the ones I wanted to say. It was surreal. It continued all day, and at that night, my husband told me the left side of my face had gone slack. I tried to stand up, but I couldn't. It didn't actually sink in until later that I had a stroke. When I realized what happened, I was devastated. I was 31, and I had my whole life to live, but it was now stuck inside this broken body. For two years after that, I was unable to say more than 20 words. I couldn't move my right arm more than a few inches and could only walk for five minutes without needing a wheelchair. I would have spent the rest of my life that way if it hadn't been for Dr. Gary Steinberg. Until Dr. Steinberg came along, most scientists thought stroke victims had to make their meaningful recoveries within the first six to 12 months. After that, there wasn't much hope for us. Dr. Steinberg refused to believe that. Last June, he published his first study on this. It was a small trial, just 15 patients but the changes were unprecedented. I'm incredibly grateful to have been one of the patients in this first trial. His work has been a miracle. It's been four and a half years to the day now, and I'm able to climb stairs, have conversations with family and friends. I run, I work out, my life is amazing. <laughs> I was also able to become a mother. <laughs> Thanks to Dr. Steinberg, I have a beautiful one-year-old boy named Lucien, who I hope <laughs> is sleeping right now in the hotel across the street. <laughs> in fact, just yesterday, he, um, he um, walked 
with no one, help, no one else for the first time. <laughs> I hope to see many other stroke patients experience the same kinds of benefits even after years of paralysis. I'm also hopeful, as is Dr. Steinberg, that these findings will point the way toward new treatments for other conditions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. His work has given us a different and much more optimistic understanding of how the human brain works for his vision and perseverance, and for the life he's already transformed. I'm proud to present this year's Life Sciences Award to a man who's given me a new life, Dr. Gary Steinberg. Sonia, thank you so much for the, for the introduction and, and very kind words. It's amazing to me uh, the fact that you can walk up on this stage so easily and communicate now. This has been a, a wonderful event. Um, I'm very deeply honored and humbled to be included in the ranks of the uh, prior innovators and luminaries who received this award and the other recipients tonight. It's quite a diverse group of, of uh, creativity. I asked my wife, Sandy, if she ever thought in her wildest dreams that I would receive this award. She told me I was never in her wildest dreams. So, so, but so, she didn't know that was coming, but I love you, babe. Until recently, there really was no hope for patients like Sonia. This trial has completely changed our notion of what happens to the brain after a stroke. Typically, patients who have a stroke make some recovery for three to six months. After that, there's no further improvement in their neurologic condition. If the stroke has caused paralysis or robbed them of their ability to speak, they are unable to ever recover. In fact, we thought those brain circuits were irreversibly damaged or even dead. We now know that that's not true. We just have to figure out how to resurrect the circuits. So what would this treatment be like for you if you suffered a stroke? It's actually pretty straightforward. We'd make a small hole in your skull about the size of a nickel and attach a stereotactic frame to your head to create a kind of GPS guidance system to insert the needle, very tiny needle, into the brain and implant stem cells with submillimeter accuracy. We don't put the cells directly into the stroke because that's a very inhospitable environment. We place them around the stroke. You'd be awake the whole time. You'd be sedated, given nice medicine so you wouldn't remember it. And then you'd leave the hospital the next day. How do the stem cells work to recover function in the brain? Initially, we thought that they turned into neurons and reconstituted circuits. That's not true. What they do is to pump out very powerful molecules, proteins, growth factors that promote the growth of your innate neuron processes, new blood vessels, new synapses between your existing brain nerve cells, and importantly, they modulate the brain's immune system. In the simplest sense, we believe that these transplanted stem cells turn your brain into a neonatal or infant brain that recovers very well after a stroke or other injury. While we don't want to overpromise, the result in some cases is quite remarkable. And it may have implications for other neuro neurologic disorders, such as spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, and possibly degenerative diseases. 
like Parkinson's disease, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and even Alzheimer's. I want to thank everyone at Stanford and Sanbio, the company we partnered with who contributed to the success of the trial, from the brilliant preclinical scientists in the lab to our exceptional clinicians and staff. And I also have to thank the courage and perseverance of patients like Sonia. They are what is most gratifying about my job and the reason I come to work every day. Thanks a lot.